I'm Scott Hall from the FireEye Cloud Collector team. We're going to be discussing the Mandiant Query Language tips and tricks. In this video, we're going to be covering searches, lists, and field aliases. On the topic of searches, we're going to be discussing colon versus equal, sets, subsearches, group by, and the has and missing search directives. Let's begin our discussion on search syntax by taking a look at the colon and the equal sign. You may have seen example queries that use one or both. Let's examine the difference between the two and when it might be appropriate to use them. Let's take a look at colon first. Let's start by an example query. Domain eBay. The colon is going to search off of tokens in a field and a token is usually separated by a punctuation appropriate for that field. So in this example, we're looking at the domain metadata field, and the appropriate punctuation for token separation is the period. So by typing domain colon eBay, we're going to get some results back. Now let's take a look at the, uh, at the groupings of domains that are returned by that query. You'll see that we get results back like rover.ebay.com, www.us.g.ebay.com. So basically it's anything with the token eBay is going to get returned. Let's modify that query to be pages.ebay. And you'll notice the only results returned are pages.ebay.com, www.pages.ebay.com, and pages.ebay.ca. What happens if we modify this just to be eBA? Will we get any results back uh, for eBay.com? You'll notice that since we're only looking at the tokens that match eBA, the only result that came back is eba.benefitnews.com, which isn't ebay.com. Let's go back to the pages.ebay example. Now let's take a look at the equal sign. The equal sign is going to look off of uh, exact matches to, to what you're searching. So you'll notice when we do colon pages ebay.com, we get the three results we did previously. Let's change this to an equal sign. No results returned. Let's modify that to be pages.ebay.com and see if we get results. So there you have it, the difference between the colon and the equal sign. Sets are a way of searching against multiple values in a single metadata field. Let's take a look at how to use sets. Searches can be performed against comma-separated sets of values contained within square brackets. So let's type domain, and then let's uh, use the square brackets to list the values that we want to search for. What the search is going to do is it's going to look for values Google or com in the metadata field domain. By default, the set feature inside the square brackets treats fields and list values as an AND or an OR. So in this example, we're going to get back domains that have either Google or com in their name. Now this isn't restricted to just domain, we can use uh, uh, lists of IP addresses in, let's say, source IPv4 or destination IPv4. Let's take a look at using the AND symbol and sets. What the AND symbol is going to do is it's going to require that both values be in that metadata field. So if we run this search, we're only going to get uh, results back that have both Google and com in the domain metadata field. And that's how you use sets.
Searches use parenthetical expressions. So for example, let's say we got an Intel hit uh, for a particular malware family, let's say Hoopagon. I want to look at the destination IP addresses that were involved with that Intel hit, and then I want to start looking for other source IPs within my network that might have communicated uh, with the destination IPs associated with that Intel hit. So first, let's take a look at the, uh, at the search for the Intel hit. Class Intel hit. Let's see what kind of results we get back. All right, now I want to find all of the um, all of the source IPs on my network that uh, that have communicated with destination IPs associated with this malware family. So I'm going to uh, look at the common denominator of DST IPv4, and then I'm going to use parentheses to enclose uh, my internal subsearch. And I want to look at a different data class that contains these destination IPv4s. In this case, let's take a look at the bro connection class. And finally, I want to see all of the source IP addresses that uh, have communicated with these destination IPv4s. So what's going to happen is anything within the parentheses is going to be executed first and then the results from that search, we're going to use the DST IPv4 to load the greater query. So let's see what we get. So here you'll see all of the source IPv4s that uh, have communicated with the destination IPv4s associated with this uh, particular Intel hit. Now there, there is uh, some things to note about uh, sub-searches. Any of the subsearches that you execute, the ones inside the parentheses, are going to be limited to a 10,000 event limit uh, when this internal search is run. So only the first 10,000 events are going to have the DST IPv4 pulled from uh, those results. So that's something to keep in mind. You can either uh, narrow down your um, if you're not seeing what you're expecting to see, you can either narrow down this internal subsearch uh, to be more specific, or you can change the time frame uh, to start looking for the results that, uh, that you're expecting to see. In our previous topics, we've been using the group by command. Let's, uh, let's take some time and explore the group by command in a little bit more detail. Event results are grouped together by single or multiple fields when you use a group by. A table will be displayed above the list of the returned events that will show the field groupings and the count of events associated with the grouping. So let's, uh, let's do a little example here. So this is going to return all of the uh, events with a destination IPv4 of 8.8.8.8. .8 Let's uh, group that by source IPv4 to see which source IPs have been communicating with that destination. You'll notice that a table is displayed with the results and the count of the number of events from that uh, particular result that we're grouping by. You'll notice that by default, the number of groupings is limited to 50. You'll, you'll see that uh, the 50 number here next to the field that you're grouping by. You can increase that uh, result by adding a number after the field that you want to group by. So in this case, let's say I want to see the first thousand. And as it turns out, we only have 656 source IPv4s communicating with DST IPv4 8.8.8.8. .8 now by default, the results are going to be returned sorted by uh, greatest to least. Let's change the sort order. And the way that we do that 
is by using either the greater or less than sign before the field that uh, you're grouping by. So in this case, let's look for destination or let's look for source IPv4s uh, that have communicated the least with this destination IP. This is a great way to look for outliers and data uh, instead of looking at the ones that communicate uh, the most often. Now we're looking at the ones that communicate the least often. Now, like we talked about uh, previously with sets, you can use sets to group by multiple values um, in your return results. So let's look for source IPv4, and also let's look at the destination port that's being, uh, being used. In the return results in the group by table, you'll see that we have the source IPv4, and then a comma, and then the destination port. The has and missing search directives can be included to tell tap to only return events that contain a specified field in the event, or only return events that are missing a specified field in the event. And you can also incorporate sets into using uh, has and, and missing. So let's give an example here. This search is going to return all events that have this particular source IPv4. Let's say we want to narrow down our search to include only results that have the domain metadata field in them. And let's show all of the classes that contain that source IPv4 and have the domain metadata field. Now let's take a look at missing. What this is going to do is going to return results that don't have a metadata field called domain. Now you can incorporate sets uh, just like you can with uh, when you're searching for other metadata fields. So let's do has domain and also let's only get results that also have a URI field. Now when you're doing sets with has and missing, it's not an and or, it is an implied and. So both fields have to be present uh, for the has to work. We've previously discussed using sets to search for multiple values within a single metadata field. There is another way to do that and is particularly useful if you are searching for a large number of items in a single metadata field, and that's using lists. Lists are homogeneous groupings of data that should be present in a single metadata field. Uh, for instance, uh, source IPv4s would all be contained in a single list. Uh, FQDNs would be in its own separate list as well. If you click on the list button uh, on, the, on the search toolbar, You'll see that there are a number of lists that are pre-populated. These are created and maintained by FireEye. You can create and maintain your own list of items. Uh, one particular useful uh, uh, situation that you would use lists for is maintain a list of high-value assets. Uh, let's say you put in the IP addresses of all of your critical database servers. And that way, when you're searching, you can reference that list and only look for events for those critical database servers. So let's show the syntax uh, for uh, using lists. I've taken the liberty of creating a list of domains called unapproved domains. These are domains that our users probably shouldn't be visiting during work hours. So I, I've thrown facebook.com, ebay.com, and craigslist.com into this list. Now let's see how we use a list in a search. All, uh, all lists are referenced using the dollar sign symbol. So let's do domain colon dollar sign unapproved domains. And let's group that by domain.
And you'll see all the return results contain domain names that were in our unapproved domains list. The final topic of discussion are field aliases. The search Maniac Query language supports the use of fixed field aliases. They're not user definable, but they are very useful. You can think of field aliases as a way of searching across multiple metadata fields that are all related using a, a single search. All field alias searches begin with a tilde symbol and uh, a, a list of the available field aliases is available in the online help and we'll go into that in a second. So let me show you an example of using a field alias. Uh, a fantastic one to use is uh, the alias IPv4. So we're going to use tilde IPv4. Let's give it an IP address. And let's, uh, let's just see what results come back. So what this is doing is performing a search for this IP address across a number of metadata fields that contain IPv4. So those would be uh, things like uh, source IPv4, destination IPv4, trans destination IP, trans source IP, a, a large number of fields. So let's group this by source IPv4, destination IPv4. And when we do that, you'll be able to see that this IP address is contained in either the source or the destination uh, IPv4 uh, metadata field. If you click on the syntax help button on the uh, search toolbar, it'll take you to the online help. And if you just search for the word aliases, you'll be able to see a list of available aliases. And by clicking on those, you'll be able to see what metadata fields are contained in those aliases. I hope you found this video informative and thanks for watching.